Hey there guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome along to a brand new Formula 1 2017 video and today we are racing our home Grand Prix. It is round uh, 10 of the <laughs> World Championship and we are going to be driving around Silverstone. So to mark the occasion, I thought I would spoil myself and have a brand new helmet design as you can see on the screen. In addition to our new livery, I thought also I would um, up the difficulty. We did pretty well just recently, we, um, so I've upped it to 80 and we're now on expert difficulty. Also notice for some reason, I've not had a safety car and my sounds are all weird. I don't know why. So, um, yeah, I put safety car on and put damage on simulation. Um, not really sure why they have been turned off, but Anthony Davidson and Crofty, after racing a couple of times, have said, oh, the safety car has really changed things, even though we've not had a safety car. And I kind of guess in some races we should have got them, um, but we didn't because for some reason the set was turned off. But anyway, it's turned on now, so hopefully in the future we will get some safety car action. Quick word. Listen, I don't think the car is hitting its performance targets right now. We really do have to find a lot of improvement. Take a look at the report and we'll talk about it later, okay? So it seems that Chris isn't happy with our progress compared to other teams, but I for one have found that resource points are really hard to come by so far. So hopefully as we progress and get like a first driver status, hopefully we will, uh, that will get a lot easier. But um, I did spend some development points. I decided I was going to focus on reliability of the gearbox and the engine. So uh, yeah, we've got a durability upgrade going on there, which we expect to receive at the next Grand Prix, which will hopefully fix a few things. On with practice. So this is the track acclimatization test, and um, I, I'm pretty—I I know pretty Silverstone pretty well, so I was pretty happy that this was going to be a good test. As we cross the line, we get a 525 and go purple in the track acclimatization. So no real surprise there. On to the tire wear test, and um, yeah, we was good on the Delta, but the actual tire wear itself was a bit of a struggle, and. Um, Come across the line here, we actually failed. Uh, we are actually using heavy tire wear, so that's not so good. On to fuel saving, but um, as always, we've had two greens, and then I was like, yeah, I'm going to nail this in the purple. We've got to get a purple here, we always do. So, yeah, we did with a um, good delta time and good fuel, optimal fuel usage indeed. On to the race pace now, and um, I really wanted just to, you know, get as many laps out here as I could. So, um, yeah, this is lap four of the race pace, the first race pace anyway, and we actually go purple with an optimal. And I waited for a second run, I decided I would change the tyre out because you can actually get more um, uh, resource points doing this. So we got caught up with uh, Palmer here, so I went round the outside of Palmer um, on the third lap on the super softs. And then just watch what happens here, this is, this is really annoying. So yeah, terminal damage. I was I was taking my normal sort of line through there, and um, you can't really see it very well from here. But um, what actually happened is Palmer came up alongside me on the outside, tried to tag me. Uh, I didn't try to. Tag, he tagged me and actually drove me off. So on board here with Palmer, we'll see. I get a better drive off the corner, taking the race in line. He actually tries to take me on the outside um, as I come across on the race in line, and yeah, he just gets the back wheel and throws us both into the barrier, terminal damage, and the end of the practice session. On to qualifying, and um, our second lap here on Q1 was enough to see us through as we come round the final corner here and um, take it in a sixth position. That was quite comfortably through to Q2. Moving on to Q2, though, as you can see as we come into the final section here, our first lap was actually our best lap. As we come around the final corner, I think we get a, like a 135, 136. Can't quite see it from here. I do apologize. But yeah, put us provisional fifth place. And we did actually go and try and do another run at this point. But um, lap three, we was improving. And um, we just got went out too wide. Um, put the power down far too early off the racing line on the marbles. And um, yeah, we was off the track in a big cloud of dust as we take another look at this um, right now on the replays you see just, just pushed out too wide on the exit of the corner we was never going to make um, 
anything but the gravel there, unfortunately. But it was enough to see us through to Q3. In Q3, though, uh, more of the same. We, we set our initial banker lap, um, which put us in a provisional sixth place? Fifth place, sorry. Fifth place. Uh, but we just really wasn't able to improve after that. And... Um, Everybody around us improved, though, which means we now start the British Grand Prix in 10th place behind our teammate Roman Grosjean. So um, hopefully the race will bring us a bit more fortune than qualifying did. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Bottas, Raikkonen, Daniel Ricciardo and Verstappen, Massa, Grosjean, a Haas and Esteban Ocon, Stroll, Hülkenberg, Daniel Kvyat and Sainz, Palmer, Alonso, Stoffel van Dorn and Sergio Perez, Verlein and Marcus Ericsson rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Okay, I know it's your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Don't take unnecessary risks. So it seems that Jeff is more worried about us um, showing off and potentially having a terrible, terrible race in front of our home crowd. I'm more worried at this point that um, we've actually got the intermediate tyres on, but in typical British weather, um, yes, the heavens have opened, which is going to make for an interesting race, I think. Um, you know, I'm not overly the most confident person on the wet tyres at the minute, so... Um, at this point, I'm just praying and hoping that um, in front of my home crowd, I'll be able to... Hold it all together, and we will be able to, um, you know, survive the wet conditions. Maybe a safety car will come out and help us, but um, who knows? We need to, need to now focus and settle down, ready for the race start. The rest of the grid is forming up. Be patient and watch for the lights. So here come the lights. It's four, it's five, and the Silverstone Grand Prix is go! And away we go. A pretty tidy start, I think. Um, teammate has gone out wide, but um, we actually go on the inside of Grosjean and um, gain a place off the start. So a fantastic start in these wet conditions. Wasn't expecting to get away so quickly as we're now right on the back of Massa as we put one down the inside of Massa into turn three. Two places off the opening few corners, and um, yeah, at this point I was thinking about going up the inside of Max Verstappen, but um, decided against it. So a good two-position gain, and um, hopefully we can, you know, kind of stay with Verstappen and try and pull away from Felipe a little bit. But um, as well, you know, it, it's all about finding our groove in these tricky, slippy, intermediate conditions, so we get a little bit of slide out there. And um, go a little bit wide, but we're sticking with Verstappen. Um, you know, we're not doing too bad at this point in time. I am a little bit nervous, but um, we're up in the rich just to, you know, try and keep Verstappen. But there is a bit of a gap go behind us to Massa, so that's good. We seem to be keeping with the opening pattern as we turning very, very late and go a bit wide. And that's going to allow Massa to actually catch up on the back of us. And uh, in a total roll of us, we actually lose the, the gap to uh, Verstappen. But I'm very... Um, very solid through this section of the track so um, hope to actually pick up some more pace on Verstappen and get back on the back of him as we head down to the hangar straight here and um, coming towards the end of lap one so pretty good we are um, sticking with the Red Bulls pulling out a slight gap over Massa on lap one Bit of slide as we exit the penultimate corner there, but um, it's not really compromised our gap to Massa. We have got a 1.3 second gap at this point in time. So, um, yeah, holding steady and um, just need to settle down a bit more now and get into the groove. Even if we hold this position for the rest of the race, I'll be more than happy with uh, this. It's, you know, it's a two-place gain. So, um, yeah, on to lap four. Four now, and as you see, we've pulled out quite a substantial gap to Massa, and we've managed to stay with Verstappen as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so, um, yeah, really, really happy with that. 1.2 behind Verstappen on lap four, five ahead of Massa. 
but not a lot's really happening in the race at the moment. It's um, a little bit stale. And uh, coming on to lap seven now, and um, we actually gain another place. Uh, Verstappen had uh, some sort of failure. I don't think it was a engine failure, but uh, yeah, the safety car has been deployed as we go on board here with Verstappen. Um, yeah, I honestly, I don't think there was any um, puff of smoke from his car as such, as we have a look now. Maybe there is. I don't know. It's hard to tell in the, in the spray, but yeah, he just literally pulls over to the side, and that is the end of Verstappen's race, which promotes us to P6 and our very first safety car, having finally realized that um, we hadn't got the safety car on, which I found very, very weird. I'm pretty sure in the very first episode I did turn the safety car on. But yeah, we're right at the limit here. We need to reduce the pace because we're going too fast. But um, as we go... Stupidly, stupidly wide. And the safety car, oh my goodness, the safety car had an absolute mare. Um, cars just got tangled on the apex with the safety car, as we'll look at a few replays in a moment. But um, yeah, you'll probably see on the map there, there's like, like cars are going really, really slowly behind the safety car. And um, as we go on board with the Force India here, he just totally blocks the apex. His cars are trying to get past him. But then the Force India tries to go around the outside and just drives straight into the back of the safety car. And I've actually seen a lot of videos where the safety car has caused a problem as we go on board here to see what exactly happened. And he tries to go to the outside. The safety car is just like turning to the outside and the Force India is just turning straight into the back of the safety car. It's, it's bizarre as we see um, Lance Stroll's perspective here. He kind of like almost turns straight into the safety car as well. The Toro Rosso kind of gets away with it as uh, we'll see here. Yeah, Lance Stroll is very, very lucky. But then the McLaren of Van Dorm is not so lucky. Anyway, coming to the end of the safety car period, we are trying to stay with Ricardo. It's going to go racing any time now. Any time now. As um, we waiting to put that power down. We go out a little bit wide. And here we go. The space has been picked up. We are racing once more. And... Um, yeah, let's see if we can do the same again. Try and stick with Ricardo and build a gap over Massa. Uh, we still have got five laps to go, so um, still a way to go. But, um, yeah, we have restarted. We are back to racing, and we just need to settle back into the groove. But Massa is all over us here as we um, restart and go through the, the first couple of corners. But uh, we was quite mighty through there. We had a nice bit of pace. The following lap, Vettel weirdly decided that he was actually going to pit um, he had all that time behind the safety car and didn't pit but now he decided now was the time to pit so um, he was the only one that pitted um, weirdly enough so yeah not sure if he had some sort of damage or his tires were just gone but um, yeah no that's promoted to a p5 now p5 on lap 10 in front of our home fans and as you can see we've, we've pulled out a gap to master again and we are still sticking with ricardo so maybe maybe we can improve a little bit more still yet yeah, as you can see right here we're right on the back of daniel ricardo on the penultimate lap here lap 12 and uh, master is nowhere to be seen it's just a battle between me and ricardo can we keep it nice and tidy here and get a good exit onto the hangar straight we're not as close as I'd like to be. Obviously, we've got no DRS in these wet conditions as we head down the hangar straight. Can we? Can we get any close to Ricardo? The answer is unfortunately no. We locked up the brakes. We went out wide. And unfortunately, Ricardo has gone. Um, luckily, we had that buffer to Massa. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much just ruined any chance of making a P4 in front of the home crowd, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, we're now going to bring it home in a respectable P5 in front of the home fans. And, um, yeah, it's a P5 finish at Silverstone. So there we have it, guys. Lewis Hamilton brings it home in first in front of the home crowd to take 25 points with his teammate Valtteri Bosses behind, Kimi Raikkonen third, Daniel Ricciardo fourth, and we finish fifth. Our teammate Roman Grosjean finishing seventh, which is a good points hole for the Haas team.
So following his fantastic drive in front of the home crowd, Lewis Hamilton actually takes the lead in the driver's standings ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. We remain in 7th with Roman Grosjean moving up to 12th ahead of Jolien Palmer in the Renault. Not much moving at the top, but it's Williams Racing who take the biggest gain from Silverstone, moving up from 8th to 5th ahead of most of the midfield teams, but has still remain in 4th with our solid points scoring finish. Guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back real soon with the Hungarian Grand Prix, but until next time, I've been Nock, you've been awesome. Happy gaming.